And welcome to Lesson 1.4. You'll notice that there is no Lesson 1.3. That's because it's called a strategy guide. And in order to make things go quicker in the course and for me to cover the material and have enough time for review for the Provincial Achievement Test, um, I'm not going to be doing those uh, strategy ones. If you want to look them over, and, uh, you're welcome to do so. And if you have any difficulty with them, bring them to me and I'll help you with them. But I won't be covering them in the video series here. Okay, this is Lesson 1.4. We're continuing to use variables to describe patterns. And again, now we're going to be using a mathematical expression to represent a pattern. Now, in math, in high, in high school, we have relations, functions, and expressions. Um, the term expression and relation are interchangeable at this point. So if you see me use the word expression, I'm talking about a relation. And if you see me use the word relation, I'm talking about an expression. Now, you should know the difference between expressions and equations because we talked about those before. Remember, an equation is a, a mathematical sentence that has an equal sign and an uh, uh, expression. An expression is a mathematical sentence using variables and numbers that has no equal sign. So a relation is actually an expression. Okay, so let's go on to our first one. This is an example which is used from a real, uh, some, for some sort of a real situation. These are the types of questions you'd get on your achievement test. So let's read it together. A grade six class went to the midway at a fair. Now the midway is where you have all the rides. It costs the student $25 to get in and then $5 for each ride they take. Now they're only going to pay the $25 once to get in. They're not going to go and have to pay that again after, you know, each ride. Um, but if they take one ride, it's five bucks. If they take two rides, it's 10 bucks. So I want to make a table of values for a student showing the cost for each number of rides. Well, I'll help you with the first one. Let's say that you go in there and you're just taking your little brother or sister and you're not going on the rides. But because you enter, you still have to pay $25, all right, even if you're not going on rides. And then you just watch your brother or sister on the rides and you supervise them. Right now, they are going to pay the 25 bucks to get in too. But depending on the number of rides they take, that's where the cost increases. So I'd like you to fill in the rest of this table, uh, pause the recording and fill it in for each time a, a you know, they take a ride, how much it's going to cost them. Okay. Well, easiest way to take a look at this is one ride is going to be 25 bucks to get in and then $5 for the ride. So there's one ride, an increase of five bucks. If you go and take two rides, it's going to be the $25 plus five, 10 dollars for rides. So there's 35. And if you take three dot rides, that's 15 bucks, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, and 30 dollars for each of the rides. And of course, you still have to keep the count of the cost. You still have to include the cost of getting in because everybody who goes in has to pay the original 25 dollars. So in this lesson, we need to create an expression or a relation to describe the cost of the rides. Now, let's stop for a second and talk about your relation and expressions. What is an expression? Well, we know this is a mathematical statement with numbers and operations. Operations are plus, minus, multiply, and divide. So for example, three times four minus two is called an expression. We know this from before. If it was had an equal sign and an answer, then it would be an equation. It's also called a relation. For the example given above, what is the expression or relation which describes the cost of the students? Well, the total cost uh, is going to be the number of rides times five dollars okay so if i go once i get have to add five dollars if i go zero times i don't add anything if i go ten times i got to add fifty dollars all right and you have to include the twenty five dollars to get in the fare okay so what this is you take the number of rides multiply it by five and then you add the entrance cost since rides is a word we can't use that in a relation we have to change it to a variable so what would be a really good word letter to use to replace the word rides? Well, obviously, since rides starts with R, it would make sense to use R. So the letter R is called a variable. A variable is defined as a letter or symbol that's used in an expression or a relation or an equation to represent a number. In this case, the number of rides is going to be the R. So we can take and replace the expression rides times 5 plus 25, take rides out and put in the letter R. Now this here is our relation. Okay, so let's see if we can, we're going to be doing a little bit more work here uh, on, on replacing and, and uh, 
working with, with relations. And you have to learn some language that will help you with this. For example, what does it mean when you say a number increase by four? What does it mean when you say a number decrease by seven? So I'll stop, start, start with the first one. A number increased by four. So what you have to do is take a number and think about it. Okay, if you have a number and you increase by four, that means that number is first, and then you increase by four, it's going to be n plus four. A number decreased would be n take away seven. Now, a number grouped into threes, remember grouping and sharing is dividing, so that's n divided by three. And quadrupled, well, your quad has four wheels, that's why it's called a quad. So in this one, you're multiplying by four. So this one would be four times n, also four n will work. We usually don't include the x because uh, in multiplication, because the x is one of the most common variables we use later on. So this, in the, if you give this to a grade 12 student, they're going to say that's four times a number times a number because they're going to think that x and n both represent different numbers. They're not going to re remember that x is also multiply. So eventually we have to get rid of this, this multiplication sign in here. But for now, it's okay. You can go four times n. Now, some of the simple ones you should remember, the word sum means to add, difference is the answer to a subtract question, Product is the answer to multiplying, and quotient is the answer to dividing. We have a whole bunch of words here that I've, that I've listed, and you can list even more, which tell you to add, subtract, or divide. So, for example, if you see words like this, together, right? Sum, more, increase. Those are words that mean to add. Words like remove difference, less, decrease. Those are words which mean to subtract. Grouped, divide, quotient, separated, halved, shared. Those are all words which mean dividing. And times, doubled, tripled, quadrupled. Um, those are all words which mean to multiply. So we're going to be doing a little bit more work with these later uh, when we get to the language of algebra. But for now, what I'd like you to do is just remember that each one of these is used when we create our rules and our um, our relations. Okay, so let's take a look at another question here. Jim is 43 years old and Karen is 46 years old. What is the expression to show Karen's age when given Jim's age? Well, we know that when Jim is 43, Karen is 46. Now, next year, Jim's going to be 44. Karen will be 47. And you can go through the list here and you realize that when Jim is 48, Karen's still going to be three years older than him. So that's going to be 51. So how do you calculate Karen's age when you're given Jim's age? Well, we add three because it says here that Karen is three years. You know, we, we can figure out if, if Jim is 43 and Karen's 46, Karen is three years older than Jim. So what variable could you use to represent Jim's age? Well, obviously, the J. So now create the expression over the relation. Now we're adding three. So we take Jim's age and you add three and that looks like this. So there's your relation from this table. Let's go to the next one. Zach is participating in a wake-a-thon. That's where you get paid for how long you stay awake and you get sponsors. Serena said that she would sponsor him by giving him $10 to start with plus two dollars for every hour he stays awake. Now this is very similar to our midway question where it costs us twenty-five dollars to get in and five dollars for every ride. Now Zach gets ten dollars to start and two dollars for every hour he stays awake. So how is the total money Zach is going to raise calculated? So how do we find it? Well in this case he gets ten dollars given to him at the beginning and then he gets added to that two dollars for every hour he stays awake. So what is a good variable to use to represent the number of hours Zach stays awake? Well, that's a good H. That's a good one. We could use that if you wanted. Create a table of values to show the possible money Zach earns for zero to five hours. So let's say that Zach goes in and he, he, gets, uh, he, he doesn't even stay awake. For some reason, he goes in and he falls asleep right away. So he doesn't even stay awake for the first hour. Stay awake for the first hour. So what happens is he still gets the $10 Serena gave him to start with. Remember, Serena said she would sponsor him by giving him $10. But since he didn't stay awake even one hour, he only gets the $10 bucks and that's it. If he stays awake for an hour, he gets the $10, plus he gets one hour for staying awake. That's 12 
and then you can see 14, 16, 18, 20. All of these are calculated that way. So what I'd like you to do now is I need you to create the um, variable, the expression, the relation, uh, using H for hours to calculate the funds Zach will raise. So I want you to take a second and see if you can come up with these. All right. So first off, two times two dollars for every hour would be two times H plus the ten dollars to get in or if you want to you can think of it the other way ten dollars to get in plus two dollars for every hour he stays awake so there's your relation right there or we also call it an expression now here's another example John is collecting tricycles for his world-famous trike collection make a table of values to show the number of wheels in John's collect collection for one two three four and five trikes so one tricycle has three wheels so take a second and fill in the other four. There you go. So two tricycles have six, three have nine, four have 12, and five has 15. So the question is, what is the pattern rule? So they're going up by threes, adding three each time. So that means we're going to be multiplying by three. And since one times three is three, we don't have to add or subtract anything. So we just increase by three and that means that we're, we're going to be multiplying what the input by 3. So what is the expression? Pause the recording and see if you can come up with the expression. All right, here we go. We're going to let L W be the number of wheels. And we know we have to multiply by 3, so I'm going to use 3W. And remember, again, I took out the multiplication sign. We're going to try to start going with 3 times W. That's what this 3W means. All right, here we go. Now I'm just going to give you the table. I want you to take this table of values and create the expression or the relation for the input-output rule. So pause the recording and see if you can come up with it. All right, so first off, we're going to let X be the input. All right, so we'll stop that for a second and I'll pause for that on it. I'm not going to worry about it. Now, to go from 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 8, we know we're multiplying by 1. Okay, so multiply by 1, that's not a big deal. I'm just going to go times 1, okay? And then 0 times 1 is 0, but we got to get to a 3. So I'm going to have to add 3. Let's see if that works for the second input. 1 times 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4, so it does work. 2 times 1 is 2, plus, five, plus 3 is 5. Now, over here, we don't always in use this uh, one right here, this multiplication by 1, because it doesn't change a number. 6 times 1 is 6. 8 times 1 is 8. So you don't have to include things when you're multiplying by 1. So when it, we're what we're doing here is we're simply just adding 3 each time. So this becomes x is the input, and the relation or the expression is x plus 3. Now, if you put in uh, 1x plus three, that's still correct. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Moving on to the next question. All right. For the following table of values, write the expression of the relation you can use to find the output when given the input. All right. So here we go. I'm going to start out with first off, I'm going to give you your variable to work with. I would like you to let x be the input. Okay? So pause the recording and come up with a relation. Okay. There we go. So we are going up by twos. That means that we are adding two each time. That means we're going to start off by multiplying by two. Zero times two is zero. But we got to get to a three. So to get from a zero to a three, you have to add three. So let's check now and see if this works over here. One times two is two, plus three is five. Two times two is four, plus three is seven. So this does work. So now we have to take the add, multiply by 2 and the add 3, and we have to turn it into a relation. Now, that means that we're going to start with the expression of multiplying by 2. So that's 2x, all right? And then add 3. So it's 2x plus 3, okay? Let's take a look at the next one here. Here's an example. We're counting squares. Your input is the figure number, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4. And the output is the number of squares. And you'll see we've got 3 here. And you can see, as you count the squares, this is what you get here, 3, 5, 7, and 9. All right. Now, let's take a look at what happens here. I want you, actually, let's let you do it. Let's have you create the expression. And you can use whatever variable you wish. So pause the recording and come up with the expression or the relation. 
Okay, so over here, you'll notice that we're going from 3 to 5 to 7 to 9. That means we're adding 2 each time, so that means we have to multiply by 2 to begin with. Now, 1 times 2 is 2, but we don't have a 2. We have a 3. So to get from a 2 to a 3, you have to add 1. Now let's see if this works for the next one. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is, se is 7. And 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So this works. So we have to take multiply by 2 and add 1 and turn it into relation. So remember that we can, you can, you shouldn't be using the x, all right? But I'll allow, I'm not going to mark it wrong if you go 2x. Uh, if you did this, uh, 2 times n plus 1. At this point in time, I'm not going to mark it wrong because we both know that this is not a variable. This is actually just a multiplication sign. So I'm going to let it go now. But eventually, you've got to remember that 2n means 2 times n. And this little part right there eventually has to disappear. But we won't worry about it if you put it in right now. I'm not going to mark it wrong. All right. It's time for you to start your assignment. If you have any questions, you come and talk to me. If you need any help, come and talk to me. And uh, good luck. We will see you in Lesson 1.5.